All right, so today we're going to finish up chapter nine. This will be the last section. It's going to go all, uh, right along with what we've been doing the last couple of days with our sine, cosine, and tangent ratios. Um, and so what's been happening up until this point is we've been using sine, cosine, and tangent to solve for missing sides. So like, for instance, if I gave a triangle with a 20 degree angle here, and I said this was x is what I want to find, and the hypotenuse is 15, we were doing problems similar to this. <clears throat> now, what's going to happen today is we're going to run into problems where we're not looking for a side. They might give us a triangle, and they're going to say this side is 8, and this side is 15, and we want to find this angle right here. So now we have the sides we want. We're looking for the angle in question. And so that's going to be a big change from what we did um, the last couple of days and what we're going to do today. So before we get into how to do that, the thing we have to know is in the calculator, what exactly do we do? So calculating trig ratios in your calculator when they actually ask, ask for the angle measure is going to require us to use these special trig buttons on our calculator. Now, we know where to find sine, cosine, and tangent. All you're going to do to access these new sines, cosines, and tangents so with that little negative one in the exponent, <clears throat> to find those, all I'm going to do is on my calculator, I'm going to use the second button. I'm kind of highlighting that second button over here on the right side. Some of you have a button in that exact same place, and it says shift instead of second. So either way, second or shift, that's the button we hit first. So if I want to get this cosine expression on my calculator, I'm going to hit second or shift, and then I'm going to hit sine. Or if I want this cosine function on my calculator, I'm going to hit second and then cosine. So I'm still going to use the exact same buttons I just have to hit the second or the shift first. And so when we do that, <clears throat> All that's going to happen is we're going to hit second sine for that first example, and we see exactly what we see on the page here. We see the sine to the negative one. <clears throat> now all we have to do is plug in the fraction or decimal that they give me. So I type in 3 divided by 5 in my calculator, and when I hit enter, it's going to give me a degree measure. So I get 36.9 degrees when we round. So for inverse sine, and that's what we call it, is inverse sine. That's where this no, or statement here is coming from. <clears throat> but that's how we're going to use, or that's what we're going to use to find angles. So then as I go across here, cosine, I just do the same thing. Second cosine, I type in the fraction, 5 divided by 12. I hit enter, and I get an uh, angle measure of 65.4 when I round. And then tangent, <clears throat> same exact thing. I'm going to hit second, tangent. Now, this time they went ahead and gave me a decimal instead of a fraction. That doesn't matter. I just type in whatever number they give me. So I type in 0.4279. I hit enter, and I get an angle measure of 23.2 when I round. And so as far as plugging the calculator is concerned, it's using the exact same buttons we were using before. We just have to hit second or shift before we do it. Now, how we're going to use that then is going to be like what we see down here at the bottom. And so what's going to happen is they're going to give you a picture. So like for this first one, if we think about how tangent works, tangent is an opposite over adjacent. That's what our Soka Toa tells us. And so if I'm looking at a right triangle and I want to find, like in this case, what's going to happen is they're going to have this side is 17 and this side is 9. And they're going to say, find x. So from x, there's my angle that I'm looking for. I have the opposite side, and I have the adjacent side, which is why they chose tangent. So this is what your picture might look like to get this equation. And that's, what's going to, that's what we're going to go through here in a little bit. So as far as solving is concerned, we're going to solve exactly like we did up here. So if I want to or, uh, take the tangent away from x, I'm going to use that inverse tangent, that second or shift tangent. So I'm going to say second tangent of 17 over 9. So this is how I'm going to solve for that missing angle. And so in the calculator, I do exactly like what I did up above. I hit second tangent, 17 divided by 9. And then when I hit enter, x is 62.1 degrees. <clears throat> 
Same thing with these other ones here. So now if we come over to the sine equation, so let's just kind of draw a triangle here. So if I'm looking at a triangle and I have eight and 15, and I know that it's gonna be the opposite and hypotenuse because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That means I'm looking for this angle right here. So this picture would lead me to this equation because the opposite side is 18, the hypotenuse is 15, and so opposite over hypotenuse is always sine. Now as far as solving, we're gonna solve it exactly like we did with tangent. I need to separate the sine from the x. So I'm gonna use that second sine, and I'm gonna have that eight divided by 15. And so then I just type that directly in my calculator. Second sine, eight divided by 15, and I hit enter. And so I'm gonna get 32.2 degrees. And the same thing with cosine. So with cosine, again, if we just draw a quick little triangle, So cosine uses adjacent and hypotenuse. So I have my 13 as my adjacent, my hypotenuse is 26. And so let's say we move the angle to up here. So here's my angle, that means my adjacent is 13, my hypotenuse is 26. So this angle has adjacent and hypotenuse. And so this is what the equation would come from. So knowing how to look at a picture and coming up with the equation is gonna be something we're gonna use just like we did with um, our previous examples. And so as far as solving, we go about it the exact same way. If I wanna separate x from cosine, I use that second cosine, and I type in 13 divided by 26, and when I do that in the calculator, I get a measure of 60 degrees. Okay, so as far as in the calculator is concerned, the calculator part's really simple. It's just second sine, second cosine, or second tangent, or if you have the shift key, shift sine, and so on. So all we're doing there as far as solving the equations is using second sine, cosine, or tangent. <clears throat> now as far as the problems you'll see, you might be given triangles or, like we talked about yesterday, you might be given a description of a triangle. So we have a tree 50 feet in height, casts a shadow of length 60 feet. What is the angle of elevation from the end of the shadow to the top of the tree with respect to the ground? So these are those ones where you can get a little bit creative if you want. So you could maybe draw a tree. Okay, we know that that tree, and like at the very least, I'm gonna draw in black at the very least what you would have to draw. So we know that that tree has a height and it casts a shadow, so the height is gonna be that vertical, it's gonna cast a shadow along the ground, and we're looking for the angle from the end of the shadow to the top of the tree. So here's my right triangle, so I've got my tree, and if I'm looking at this right triangle, then it says the tree is 50 feet tall, so I need to have 50 feet for my height, the shadow length along the ground would be 60 feet, and it wants to know what the angle of elevation. So this comes back to what we talked about yesterday. Angle of elevation is always on the ground. I want this angle right here. So at the very least, what you see in black on here is what you have to show me. You can add as much to the picture as you want, but you have to have the right triangle labeled with all the pieces. Then I need to set up and solve an equation for this triangle. So if I label my pieces here, and I'm gonna do that in purple here. I find my hypotenuse first, so right across from the right angle. My opposite, so if, starting at my angle, if I go across the triangle, there's my opposite side, and that leaves my 60 feet to be my adjacent side. So there are my three labels. Now notice the hypotenuse, I have nothing there, which means I can't use sine or cosine because those require hypotenuse. And so that tells me I need to use tangent and so I say tangent, the angle always goes with tangent. So now we have tangent of x is equal to, and now I set up my fraction. <clears throat> so tangent is opposite 50 over adjacent 60. So that's just pulling out of the picture there. So tangent of x is 50 over 60. So now if I go to solve this, I'm looking for the angle. 
<clears throat> so x is the angle I want. That requires second tangent. So this is not a multiply or divide. This is a second or shift problem. So I do second tangent of 50 over 60. And when I type that in my calculator, I end up with an angle measure of 39.8 degrees. Okay, so that's the kind of type of problem we're going to be looking at here. And so sometimes they'll give you the triangle. Sometimes they're going to make you draw the triangle. So here's another one. After flying at an altitude of 9 kilometers, an airplane starts to descend when its ground distance from the landing field is 175 kilometers. What is the angle of depression for this airplane? So, again, we can kind of add in what we want to here. So if I have my airplane... Okay, so I got my airplane. It's going to start to descend, so it's going to come down to some point somewhere over here, so like an airport, so the runway, and I have a height. They told me that the airplane is nine kilometers above the ground, and then I'm gonna go across the ground to reach that point where we're gonna land. Now again, you can add whatever to the picture that you want to, and black again, I'm gonna highlight what you have to have. You have to have the right triangle. So we know it's gonna be a right triangle problem, so we draw that for sure. And then as far as labeling, the airplane is nine kilometers in the air. So that's my vertical height. It says along the ground, the distance is 175. So on the ground, I'm gonna put 175 kilometers. It wants the angle of depression. Now we said with depression, we change that to elevation. So we always put that angle along the ground as well. And so now if my angle is here, <clears throat> I need to label my pieces. So I'm going to do that in red here. So across from the right angle is hypotenuse. Across from my angle is the opposite. And then that leaves adjacent for my ground distance. And so then again, my hypotenuse is missing. So I can't use sine or cosine. And so I go ahead and use tangent again. So tangent of the angle x is equal to opposite 9 over adjacent 175. And then I plug that into my calculator using second. So I'm looking for an angle. I need second tangent of 9 over 175. And we're going to get kind of a small angle here. So second tangent, 9 divided by 175. And we end up with an angle measure of 2.9 degrees. So as you're looking at these, whatever angle they give you, make sure you can identify opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Make sure you can identify which trig ratio to use, sine, cosine, or tangent, and then understand that when you are looking for the angle, you're using second sine or second tangent, and so on as you're working through those problems. Now, the other thing that we're able to do then, now that we know how to find any side, we know how to find any angle, they're going to ask you to do things like solve the triangle. So they're going to have a couple problems where they actually say solve the triangle. And what that means is find every missing piece. So what I would do for that is when I look at my triangle, so here I have an example. What I would do for that is I would label all my missing pieces. I need to know what I need to find. So I'm missing my hypotenuse. X is what I'm going to call it then. So I'm going to label that as X because I'm missing that piece. I'm also missing angle A. So maybe I call that Y. And I'm also missing angle Z or angle C, which I might call Z. So label the three pieces you're missing. So put one as X, one as Y, one as Z. And we're going to go through and solve for those different pieces. Now, as far as solving the triangle is concerned, there are lots of different ways we could go about this. So for instance, I could find x by using Pythagorean theorem because I already know two sides of my triangle and I'm looking for the third. So if I look, use Pythagorean theorem, I do my two legs, 5 squared plus 12 squared, and set it equal to x squared, so the hypotenuse is always by itself. And if I do that, I get x squared is equal to when I take 5 squared plus 12 squared in my calculator, I get 169. Now at this point, I'm going to be taking the square root. i got to get rid of the square. 
And so when I take the square root of 169, that actually ends up being a perfect square, so I end up getting 13. And so that's one of my missing pieces. So my hypotenuse would be 13. Now the nice thing about these types of problems, if this had not been a perfect square, so let's say instead I had gotten like 175. If I take 175 and plug it in my calculator, <clears throat> the square root of 175 is 13.2, I can give the decimal answer. I don't need to break it down like we did at the beginning of the chapter, I can just give the decimal and be done. So that's a nice little change that you guys can uh, use as you're going through the homework. Now, after I know all three sides, the next thing I need to do is attack the angles. So maybe the next thing I go for is Y. Okay, so maybe I just go with that. And so if that's the angle I'm looking for, so I'm looking for that angle, I need to think about what I have. Well, right now, I have the opposite leg for Y, and I have the adjacent leg for Y. So I could go ahead and use tangent to figure out what that Y value would be. So tangent of the angle Y is equal to, my opposite goes on top, 12, over my, or adjacent, which is five. And since I'm looking for an angle, I'm gonna use second tangent. So second tangent of 12 divided by five. And so Y, if I plug that in my calculator, turns out to be 67.4 degrees. So I get 67.4 using that tangent. Now, at this point, the, the uh, inclination for a lot of students is, okay, well, now if I want to go find Z, so I'm going to highlight Z in uh, purple here. So if I want to find Z, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with opposite and adjacent, but this time opposite is 5, adjacent is 12. To avoid any confusion with that, if I know angle Y is 67.4 degrees, then that means I know this angle and this angle is a right angle, so if I subtract those from 180, I can go ahead and get angle Z. So angle Z is just 180 minus the two angles, and I get 22.6 degrees. So that last angle is actually very simple to find. It's just using your uh, triangle angle or your angle sum theorems for your triangle. So the first two things you solve for are going to be fairly difficult. The missing angle is going to be fairly straightforward at the end. <clears throat> Now, in a similar example, notice that in this case, they give us a little bit different information. This time we have an angle measure and we have a side measure. We need to find missing sides and a missing angle. So again, you can label them however you want to. So maybe I call the hypotenuse X, maybe I call the adjacent leg uh, Y, and maybe I call the missing angle Z. And it doesn't matter what you call them all. Now, in this particular example, what I might look at is, okay, if I want to solve for X, let's say. So for X, which I was using pink, X from my angle gives me the opposite, because I know that that's 7, and I'm looking for the hypotenuse, which is X, and so if I have opposite and hypotenuse, that means I need to use sine. So sine of 24 degrees is equal to opposite 7 over hypotenuse x. And then in this case, we're looking for a side. So x is on the bottom, which means we're going to divide. So I'm going to take 7 divided by sine of 24. And if I plug that in my calculator, I get a, a value of 17.1, or 17.2, sorry. So we get 17.2, there's my missing hypotenuse. Now, if I want to use Y, so if I want to solve for Y here, <clears throat> in that case, as I'm looking at my angle, I still have my opposite side 7, and I have my adjacent side, y. So those are the two pieces I have right there. Well, opposite and adjacent would mean tangent. So if I take tangent of 24, that gives me my opposite 7 over my adjacent, y. y is in the bottom, 
So I'm going to divide, so y equals 7 divided by tangent of 24. And so in that, or when I plug that in my calculator, 7 divided by tangent of 24, I end up with a value of 15.7. And so there's my other missing side. So now I have both missing sides. The only thing I'm missing now is z. Now before I get all complicated with solving for z, <clears throat> notice I have this angle is 24, I have this angle is 90, all three angles have to add up to 180, so if I want to solve for angle Z, I don't have to use trig. I can just subtract from 180, and so if I subtract those two angles from 180, angle Z would be 66 degrees. So finding the last missing angle doesn't have to be very difficult. Like, don't go through a long, drawn-out process when all you have to do is subtract from 180. Anything else, like missing sides or the first missing angle, yes, you have to use your sine, your cosine, or for the sides, you could use Pythagorean theorem. So you have lots of different options there as far as solving. So with that in mind, you should be able to complete the homework for today. So you can get that in class or on, the, on Google Classroom. And then as you're working through that, if you have questions, make sure to come in and ask or check the answer keys as those become available uh, to help you finish that up.